Hey. Hey. It's, it's too dark over there. Get into the light. Uh, that was such a cute little hey. Yay. Hey. Hey. Aww. I couldn't do it. I was just going <laughs> to... You see the camera. You just, you just freak out, huh? What about you, Gabe? How do you react under the camera? That's that's the game. Hey. 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 Uh, the C word is this absurdist tragic comedy set in a 1930s insane asylum, and it follows the lives of these these two patients, Rick and Carrie, as they're held hostage and tortured by these guards, and their lives change when this new patient comes in. This this former banker named Rick. And he believes in the world around him. And that belief is challenged. And I think Rick kind of takes the place of the audience. And we are able to navigate the world of SeaWorld through, through his lens. When were you born? Why does that matter? What is your father's name? Michael, but this How is long have you known me? Since, since I've been here, I told you. When is Christmas? And as much as this play is about like how much life sort of is convoluted and doesn't is sort of worthless in a sense it's also about how much life is like priceless despite like whether it's jeff bezos or like fucking me you know there's no subtle worship here he was the silence of the insane do you know what year it is i think for me, it helped me embrace like parts of myself that I really hadn't before. Because with Carrie, she's a super um, spontaneous person, I'd say, and she's very like she can be super big or super small in what she does. Um, but either way, it's kind of extreme, and I I'm kind of uptight just as a person, and so like having her kind of in my brain over the past four weeks has let me let loose and explore things in a way that I hadn't before. Um, and I, f I don't know, I feel more free. They always do. Oh, I remember what her hair used to smell like before it changed. And, and her, her fingernails looked like before they got black. And her smile, her smile. Okay, so it's not really how it smells like to me. Like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. god. You, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm famous. Yeah, please do that real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm just so I'm so freaking proud of everyone involved because they they are not the same people that they were. So I say that my personal breakthroughs are just like having confidence in myself that I can help other people reach their own breakthroughs. And now it's like I just I guess I don't care about people's opinions of me as much anymore. Like I'm <clears throat> less afraid to say like no, this is my opinion on this, and we don't agree, and that's fine. But I don't feel the need to, like, go to someone else's opinion anymore. Mm -hmm. Or, like, find, like, I don't feel the need to always find a middle ground. Because mm -hmm. Cassandra wouldn't. <laughs> She's just like, my opinion, bye. Yeah. Relax. Pick your poison. Got used to not having that during the prohibition. Give me a smoke. Smoke it is. I would say the most fun thing, honestly, is watching people get more comfortable with each other. Um, I don't know why, it just, it just really warmed my heart. Because at the beginning, you know, people are shy, we're just, we're, we're filling each other out, we don't, we don't fully know each other. <laughs> well, you, I mean, you know the show, Strange Addiction? I don't think I do. Yeah, that's true. There's a guy in there who's good at eating bricks. Oh, like, he's like, he's like eating like he's, an airplane. Yeah, but the, the, the <laughs> brick guy seems like he's thoroughly having an excellent time. So at, this, at that point, it's like, what do you do? Like. When someone's just enjoying themselves, <laughs> like, do you really, like, I mean, let, let them, you let document them it. it, that's what you do. Okay, I guess yeah, you're right. I actually, <laughs> when I first read through the script, it didn't make any sense, like, what, five, six weeks ago? And now, <laughs> actually going through it, it starts to make more sense. And, uh, and I think even if it just makes sense to us, that's all that matters, really. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, we're, you know. That's you. It's, 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 it's our show. Us. It's our show. So, you know. Some lives. And no, she doesn't know What is your name? I have an inability to find shelter for his reservation time to panic and pray to us for loving. Yo, what is your name? That night. That night was a huge breakthrough, I guess, for me. Not because, like, 
of being an actor, but more so that now I have like some type of camaraderie with the cast mm -hmm. and I'm able to like bear my soul safely than yeah. comparatively. Cause I didn't know you guys at all prior to this play. So it was a lot harder for me to like really get into it mm -hmm. before. And then we all kind of like, Hey man, this is what I've dealt with. It's like, okay, well now we can meet on common ground, you know? Yeah. So that was a big thing for me. But about halfway through the rehearsal process, I kind of realized like, okay, we've done all this table work, we've done all this blocking, we've, we've covered all of our like intentions and our meaning objectives and all that like important stuff, but we're not gonna move forward unless we all as a group trust each other. And so we spent one rehearsal where we didn't look at the text at all. And I just took everybody through a series of exercises where we just, we just all bared our souls. It was it was so intimate. Um, no one was was not crying by some point. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Every like, time yeah, I hear, like, oh my god. Um, but yeah, I, I really could just follow the impulses that I was feeling as an actor um, safely, and I felt that honestly even before like the night where we all kind of bared our souls to each other. Yeah. Like I've I felt pretty safe in this cast from the get go, which I think is really unique. Um, yeah, there wasn't, there's like no judgment here, which I really appreciate from all of you. I don't know, it also made me sort of appreciate life more. Like I was like walking home one day after rehearsal, it was like 10 p.m. I was like, I, I was like holding my skateboard. I was like, I could skateboard home or I could just walk. I just walked home and I looked at like the moon and stuff and I was like, damn, that's pretty cool. And uh, watch a show, enjoy it, try not to understand it, just try to watch it and have a good time and then maybe once you're driving home, you can start to evaluate it. Just just watch it first. Just mm. just yeah, just watch it first. It's an existential experience. Uh just get, I think what everyone else has said, just let it sink in. Don't try to make sense of what's going on. It probably won't make sense what's going on the first time you watch it, but at, over time, what's important to you will come to you eventually. So just watch it, open mind, just let it wash over you. Have you ever said something and then right away regretted it? If you have, or if you know what I'm talking about, or if you don't know what I'm talking about, really, either way, I think you should come watch the show. If you've ever said something and then just ask yourself, like, why did I even say that? Why did I go to that party? Why did I respond to that person? Why did I eat that meal? Why didn't I do this? Why did I do that? Just why is it like this? I think you'll resonate with it. And that's it. So come watch the show and support a BIPOC artist because that's how I should market myself, right? Right. Now I'm going to cut that part out.